Good morning, Hannah and Sierra. I had an experience uh, on mom's birthday down in Bedford that I want to be sure I passed on to you. I thought about writing it out, but and hopefully this will get the idea across well. This was, I think, the second time in 37 years uh, that I got to spend mom's birthday with her. And I did not make this connection, although it, that won't make sense when I explain what happened, but I did not make the connection at first how uh, significant something was, and I am just so glad that it happened, and uh, it, it made me think of some things that maybe could be um, meaningful for you girls too. Mom asked me several weeks ago, she, she had stuff that she was buying to kind of set up the house, and I, some of it was you know, just bookshelves and stuff like that that she'd bought from Amazon. And I tried to work the schedule out to get uh, be able to get it down there and get it done. And it just happened because I had some vacation days that I was able to go down uh, over her birthday. And uh, so I went down there on Thursday, the 18th, and then stayed overnight and was there for her birthday on the 19th and got to take her out to Golden Corral and, and that kind of stuff and it was nice. But what was really remarkable to me was having gotten the bookshelves done, there's still some little tweaks to make sure that they're stable and it's maybe attached to the walls and stuff like that for safety. Uh, she's deciding you know final touches of how she wants it done but as I as I had them done she spent most of her birthday uh, working on her books and I mean she had gotten a bunch of stuff out of boxes and she had a couple of built-in cabinets in the the house there and my they were just jammed packed uh, full uh, to the point that the all the shelves were were bowed down and I was saying well maybe I need to build some supports for the middle and stuff like that she said not to worry about that so anyway we we started getting the shelves uh, in the places that she wanted and I was working on another project for her birthday as well that uh, involved I had to I was reading a book that I was gonna share with her and so <laughs> After, and I was really tired because I did not sleep very well uh, Thursday night. And so I, at first I felt kind of bad that I was sitting reading while she was doing books. And several times I thought, well, maybe I should ask if she wants some help or something like that. And I finally decided uh, that I would just work on this other project. And so I'm sitting in her living room uh, in a chair that I've, sat in since I was a little kid and reading this book and I start to notice that she's just walking back and forth from room to room. She'd pick up two or three books or a stack and go from room to room and eventually I, I just started watching her uh, and noticed <laughs> noticed that so many times in the past when I've set up bookshelves and set up library stuff and uh, collections of things that I've just spent hours deciding, okay, this goes here and this goes over here and this should be next to that. And just quietly, I, I sat there and that's what I was seeing her do. And I realized that it's basically built in you know it's uh it's almost like a family trait that she was creating a kind of physical map or layout in her mind of where her things went and what she uh, wanted to have where and it, it was just an amazing thing to to watch and she's just quietly working away 
you know, amazing amount of energy, 81 years old, and uh, such a sharp mind still in that sense that not only did she have all this stuff, uh, and some of them that she had worked on as a proofreader and editor for some of the professors at, down at the college and that kind of thing, very strong personal connection to a lot of it, but not only did she uh, have it all, but she knew where she wanted it. And every once in a while, yeah, there'd be a, oh wait, no, there's too much of this here, and I want this next to this other part of the, the, the set of books, so I'll redo this shelf and I'll move something over there. But she just worked away for hours, and uh, every once in a while she'd sit down, take a break, and we'd talk a little bit, and I'd have something else I thought I wanted to do outside. I like tried to replant a little tree and some other stuff that she was wanting me to work on. This, you know, after mowing and that kind of thing. And it just occurred to me that you know this is this is part of my family heritage that any tendency I have to organize and sort and uh, have a sense of where something goes like it belongs right here is not something unique to me and it's not something that uh, is weird about me or my family it's just it's part of who we are and there have been many times uh, in the past where I've been away from family and there have been people that, for whatever reason, wanted me to think there was something odd uh, about me or that I had uh, weird preoccupations or, you know, was too concerned about this little detail or that. And it's just been amazing to be back around mom for a while now because uh, I'm realizing that Okay, maybe it's weird, uh, you know, it's possible, of course, but the fact is that as, as far as family goes, it's completely normal. Uh, and I have the same experience with my cousin up in Greenwood, who, uh, there is the mailing address that I use, uh, she's, she's got so much stuff, and... And she's a collector, and she's got all these projects and, and all kinds of things going on all the time. And musician and uh, a lover of literature and all those things. And that's on Dad's side. And uh, I had the same thing with Uncle Warren a few years back where, you know, I've got tools and I, I don't claim to be great with that stuff, but I enjoy doing it. And, uh, and yet sometimes it seems a little chaotic I don't have a good like setup uh, established and will carry a lot of stuff in my truck and a few years ago Uncle Warren pulled up uh, in a in his uh, van old van that he had uh, to do something that I think may be at grandmom's and he pulled up and he said, oh, let me grab this out of the van. And so I look in the van, and it's just, like, covered in tools. There's no seats in it, uh, just the driver and passenger seat. And it's just a big open uh, box van. And and there's just tools all over the floor. And, you know, uh, he but he knew where everything was. And part of the reason I, I wanted to be pass it along like this is to say, that yeah mom is enjoying her new situation she likes her house and she is obviously settling in and you know nesting and all that and it's just great to see and she's 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 bright she you know she goes slow she takes longer pauses in talking even than i do <laughs> another family thing and she uh she seems to be doing really well and the, the other reason I wanted to share it is that I, I don't know exactly what your own personal experiences are where, where you both are at but if there's ever a sense that the 
particular things that are important to you or ways you like to do things or um, ways you think about things or whatever seem different to others than what is there, what they might consider normal or typical or whatever, that may not at all mean that there's something odd about you or whatever. It just means that you're part of a family and uh, your family heritage goes way, way, way back. And it's amazing to me how how it's not the the ways that I uh, seem to uh, approach ideas or approach things maybe differently than than others around me is not necessarily a sign of like total uniqueness certainly not like uh, freakishness or anything like that it's just uh different and being around family again has really been an encouragement to me and I really wanted to pass that encouragement on to you that uh, we all have our ways and there are some things you know about each of you that probably don't match up with uh, with family because they are unique about you and and each of us but on the other hand there are some some ways that it's just kind of built in and it, it for me it was very beautiful to see mom uh, doing her thing and feeling totally connected to her approach uh, that that I, I at first I was thinking you know was she just moving stuff around but then I realized what she was doing it and I totally understood it and I would look at her shelves and and I would think okay you now maybe I wouldn't have that there next to that or whatever I was coming up with my own uh, thoughts uh, on where I would organize it, but the those kinds of differences were not the thing. The similarity was the thing. the The fact that it was it was completely normal for her, not just because she's a librarian, but because of the way her mind works, that uh, it was completely normal to uh, just be doing a setup that made sense for her and there's a lot more to go she's got stamps she's got coins she's got all kinds of uh other things that she enjoys she's saying that this little uh volunteer tiny maple tree here in the flower bed she wants that you know replanted in the backyard that's one of the things i got to do she's she's got in her mind uh the way she wants to set things up and She's doing it, and it's really, really fun to get to be a part of it. And I'm so glad I resisted the temptation of trying to get up and help her do it because we all just need to have some things where we just get to do it for ourselves. And we get to make it the way we want it, and uh, we get to uh, enjoy what we've done because uh, we we've done it. And, you know, there's a great spot. Uh, next to a little desk that she set up uh, in the the big room that would have ordinarily probably been a like a either a parlor or not quite a dining room because it's away from the kitchen and there is kind of a dining room but just kind of a big open room a second living room in a way that she has this little desk and she's got some bookshelves in the in the corner behind it and there's the C.S. Lewis. Uh, shelves and there's the Tolkien shelves and there's the uh, related uh, writers to those guys and uh, the George MacDonald Diary of an Old Soul I, I I saw it and I thought yeah that's where it goes that should be right there and then underneath that were again some things that she had contributed to uh, especially one of the professors Doc Smith set were several commentaries uh, on uh, Bible books and she was the main proofreader and kind of a, uh, a an informal editor and uh, she had a lot of those next to the the Lewis and Tolkien and it's like yeah these are things that are really important to her that have really made a big uh, impact on her life and where 
maybe she's had a chance to have an impact uh, on others by contributing to it. And uh, I just totally get that and enjoy that and celebrate that. And I, I want to be sure that I didn't just experience this for myself, but tried to communicate it best I can uh, to to let you know that there, there are ways that are so true of you like that uh, as, as well. And, uh, and I enjoy them when I see them like, uh, like I enjoyed watching, watching mom do her thing. And uh, beyond that, any ways that we're not similar, uh, we do things differently or whatever is, is also potentially something to really enjoy and celebrate. Uh, I, I can't tell you a number of times each of you uh, in your childhood would have an observation about some experience or some idea or something you saw or th or thought about. And it, it was just mind blowing to me because I never would have thought of it that way. But but it was it was great. It was insightful. It was uh, meaningful. It it. Uh, it gave me a whole fresh perspective on something I thought I, you know, understood well enough or completely or whatever. And it's like, oh, there's a whole new, a whole new way of thinking about it. Uh, thanks to you. And I, uh, I want to be sure that I, I'm trying, you know, in my own uh, way to communicate to you how both uh, special and unique uh, you each are, and so talented, gifted, motivated, uh, accomplished, uh, but then also how much you are um, part of your family, yeah, how much you reflect uh, so many qualities of your family that uh, I, I think are pretty great. No, <laughs> and, and it's been really reassuring to me personally to have moments like this uh, that, uh, that I've described with, you know, others, uh, you know, Uncle Warren and, and uh, Cousin Carol and others, where it's like, oh, yeah, okay, well, yeah, I've got my own way, but also I'm, I'm part of this clan too. And it's, it's very reassuring to me and, uh, you know, gives me a sense of peace that uh, there's always ways that I can try to be a better person, but that the things that are distinctive about me compared to others that, you know, have, don't know me that well or whatever, aren't necessarily things I should worry about or, be, or feel like need to be changed. They, they're just part of who I am, part of who we are. I love uh, you, Hannah. I, I love you, Sierra. And I'm really glad that uh, I get to see Mom enjoying her days. And I pray and hope and trust that uh, you are finding ways to uh, enjoy uh, and fulfill yourselves in, in your days also. And um, if you have thoughts about this, I, I'd, I'd love to talk with each of you about it. Uh, I, it. This is a really special time to get to, you know, after all these years, uh, be back around mom and uh, enjoy her for who she is. And uh, any chance that we get to, to spend time together, I, I always enjoy the chance to see who you are and celebrate who uh, who you are have a great day uh, have a great week uh, i love you and um, i look forward to talking with you and seeing how uh, you're expressing your own both uniqueness and uh, 
Starkness and Crawfordness and Jacksonness and all of that. Um, I love you. <laughs>